Hi there, this is Robin Norgren, and I'm your host for Montessori, Creativity, and the Meaning of Life. You can find all the work that I do on my website under www.josiesartschool.com. I'd like to start with some words from a book by Henry Nowen called Spiritual Direction. Who am I? The basic question, who am I, resurfaces throughout life. An old Talmudic tale sheds light on the true identity and value of each and every human being at the deepest level. The Fugitive and the Rabbi One day, a young fugitive trying to hide himself from the enemy entered a small village. The people were kind to him and offered him a place to stay. But when the soldiers who sought the fugitive asked where he was hiding, everyone became very fearful. The soldiers threatened to burn the village and kill every person in it unless the young man was handed over to them before dawn. The people went to the rabbi and asked him what to do. Torn between handing over the boy to the enemy and having his people killed, the rabbi withdrew to his room and read his Bible, hoping to find an answer before dawn. In the early morning, his eyes fell on these words. It is better that one man dies than that the whole people be lost. Then the rabbi closed the Bible, called the soldiers, and told them where the boy was hidden. And after the soldiers led the fugitive away to be killed, there was a feast in the village because the rabbi had saved the lives of the people. But the rabbi did not celebrate. Overcome with the deep sadness, he remained in his room. That night, an angel came to him and asked, What have you done? He said, I handed over the fugitive to the enemy. Then the angel said, But don't you know that you have handed over the Messiah? How could I know? The rabbi replied anxiously. Then the angel said, If, instead of reading your Bible, you had visited this young man just once and looked into his eyes, you would have known. Are we not challenged in daily life to look deeper into the eyes of the people we encounter? Even those who are running away from something? To see in them the face of God. Perhaps just knowing that they too are beloved children of God will be enough to prevent us from handing them over to the enemy. Are we not also challenged and encouraged to look more deeply at the way God sees us? Beloved, accepted, affirmed, worthy? Are we, like the fugitive, reflections of the Messiah? From Chris Gillibo's book, The Happiness of Pursuit. Lauren Bacall is quoted as saying, here is a test to find out whether your mission in life is complete. If you're alive, It isn't. Lesson. Everyone has a calling. Follow your passion. Here's a story in the Torah about 12 spies who are sent out from the desert to investigate the land of Canaan. They complete their mission and are entranced by what they found. The land, as the saying goes, is flowing in milk and honey, with good phone reception even in the tunnels. It's a wonderful, magical place even better than Disney World. The spies report this information back to the camp. Wonderful news, the elders say. But the report goes on to say that in addition to the milk and honey, there are giants and fortified cities. Life in the desert isn't much fun, but getting to Canaan could be dangerous. Ten of the spies end their consulting report with an ominous recommendation. Moving into the promised land is just too difficult. Better to play it safe and not fight for the land of our dreams. Two of the twelve spies file a dissenting report. Yes, it is tough, they say. Those cities, those giants, there will indeed be challenges. But we can do it, they tell the others. Let's proceed. 
Alas, the possibility of danger outweighs the promise of hope. The people choose to believe the pessimists, and they miss the Disney World experience for 40 more years. The 10 spies who warned of failure die of plague. Of the 12, only the two dissenters later make it across. Hannah Pasternak referred to this story when talking with me about her upcoming move to Israel. As a young American of Israeli heritage, she'd long held an affection for her long-away homeland. As she was reading the Torah one day and came across the story, she realized that she was just like the spies who'd seen the Promised Land but then searched for reasons to stay away. Hannah decided to bring some risk into her life. Not only would she move to Israel, where she'd never lived, but she'd begin her new life by hiking the country's national trail, a thousand-kilometer journey that would take up to two months. Just as general dissatisfaction is often not enough to spur action, being emotionally impacted by a significant event may not be sufficient either. You have to choose to respond to the event. Hannah spent the months leading up to departure learning more about family history. She took Hebrew lessons, prepared for the physically challenging hike. The preparation was helpful, she said later, but the decision to go was far more important. She wasn't like the ten spies who were frightened by a new opportunity. Like the two spies who went against the majority opinion and whose ancestors exhibited a high level of risk tolerance, Hannah would face her fears and embrace the challenge. Instead of uncertainty, she felt a sense of peace. An excerpt from a poem called King of the River by Stanley Kunitz. If the heart were pure enough, but it is not pure. You would admit that nothing compels you anymore. Nothing at all abides but nostalgia and desire. That two-way ladder between heaven and hell on the threshold of the last mystery at the brute absolute hour you have looked into the eyes of your creature self which are glazed with madness. And you say, he is not broken, but endures, limber and firm in the state of his shining, forever inhabiting his salt kingdom from which he is banished forever. <laughs> 